What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Charles Marlowe for Millennial Trades. I do have an Instagram account as well. It's millennial underscore trades at millennial underscore trade. So make sure to go and follow my brand new Instagram account. I post all of my trades. I do trade recaps on a daily basis. Today, we're going to be talking about the trades I took the last couple of days. I guess I'll start with the bad news. Yesterday was not the best day trading for me. I was down I don't know, about 6%. It was about $75 in the options trading account. You know, my first trade yesterday went really well. I'll show you guys real quickly the trade I took. It went well, but I had only made like $27, right? And so a voice inside of me was saying, you know, Charlie, you made good money. Don't mess this up. And and when I make a trade and, and, you know, I'm green on the day, I try my best not to ever go red after that. And I didn't really listen to that voice inside of, you know, something was telling me, you know, j just walk away for the day, right? You took a good trade. You made 27 bucks, walk away. I continued to trade. And as a result, I got caught in a lot of chop. Uh, yesterday, I'll show you the spy. The spy was very choppy uh, for the first part of the day, right? It made a, an initial move, which I, I, you know, I was able to catch. The rest of the day was kind of choppy until we did see some volatility towards the upside uh, later on as the day progressed. I had actually stopped out shortly before that mood had that move had happened. So it was a very frustrating day. You know, it just goes to show myself. Uh, how bad of a habit over trading really is. Today ended up a lot better, okay? I took one trade on Square. I've been waiting, I don't know, probably a month for Square to be at the level that it's at uh, today or it was this morning. So we had daily supply, I'll show you. And I managed to scalp, uh, I scaled into a uh, three contract position, ended the day up 9%, which is about a $100 gain, a a little over a hundred dollars, but we'll go ahead and uh, look at it. The main thing, I guess, the main message I want to get across in this video is that uh, over trading is the fastest way to lose money. My strategy is really that first half an hour in the day, get in, get out. My strategy is scalping, getting in and out. And, and if I continue to do that and just take the first, the first, maybe second trade of the day, uh, and just walk away. If I continue to do that, I really do believe that this strategy will be profitable for me, but I guess we'll find out as time goes on. So let's go ahead and look at the charts and uh, make sure to give this video a like if you enjoy these trade recaps. Okay, so this is Square. As you can see, Square took a very big nosedive today. And, you know, we need this, right? Let me look at the daily chart with you guys. We've needed this. This has been, like, needed. I mean, you're talking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The last 10 days, we've had eight green candles, right? We had this big daily demand zone, and then it just went nuts. Like the last week, we've had nothing but green days. But we were in this supply zone. This is daily supply, which this is why it was so powerful and why Square had such a big move to the downside. Does it kind of sting seeing you know, the fact that I sold up here to see how far it went down. Yeah, it does kind of sting a little bit, but my strategy is not day trading, right? I I'm scalping in the purest sense of the word, but we were at daily supply and I've been waiting about a week. Uh, you know, the reason I was watching Square is because the last time we were in this area, as you can see, we got some big moves to the downside. And the last time was, let's see, February 18th. That was the last time we were up at this sort of 270, 273 area, right? And now Square is 257. Let's just look at SPY real quick to kind of get some market context. Um, as you can see, SPY took a little bit of a dump. I think SPY is probably going to dump for a couple more days. I mean, this has been absolutely ridiculous. We definitely need this pullback, uh, but I'm sure the Kathy Wood fanboys, you know, were buying calls up there at uh, 4th you know, 413.96. Oh yeah, let's buy 420 calls. I'm sure there was a, a few Kathy Wood fanboys that are holding the bag on that one today. Also the NASDAQ, uh, QQQ definitely took uh, a dump, you know, but like I said, we've needed this. Uh, I mean, this has been absolutely ridiculous how many green days we've had in a row, but you can see the volumes kind of been dying down, right? We've had really low volume the last couple of days, you know, comparatively speaking, it was inevitable that this was going to happen. And these are the kind of things, you know, I, I'm learning as I go along. You know, I was anticipating a big pullback. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, and lie and say, oh, I was calling it today. Uh, but I knew Square was at 
daily supply. It had not broken its all-time high. There was a huge daily supply zone here. So this is why I was watching Square. We also had the um, direct listing uh, of uh, uh, Coinbase, right? It's not a IPO. A lot of people are calling it an IPO, but I, I, I don't think they're actually selling new stock. It's employees and people in the company are selling the stock. It's a direct listing. So that Coinbase stuff, you know, that's probably pulling a lot of money out of other places. Before I show you today's trades, let's look at yesterday's trades. I was trading the SPY yesterday. I want to look at this because I kind of failed yesterday, right? I, I failed myself, failed my strategy. You know, I sort of over traded. You know, not every day is perfect. Perfect. And, and I don't want anybody getting the impression that, uh, you know, my, my trading days are perfect because they certainly are not. Yeah, so I caught this move right here, right? Kind of scaled into a position. I figured it was going to bounce off VWAP. And, and to be honest, if today hadn't been a red day, it, it would not have surprised me at all if the SPY and the NASDAQ and all these stocks had just continued to go green. I think if they had stayed green today, it would have been the first time that the market was green 14 days in a row since like 1970 something. But I caught this move right here, you know, scaled into a two contract position and I sold probably not quite at the top uh, by the screenshot. Yeah, I guess I did hit the top, right? So I did catch that whole entire move. But the problem is, is then we had like hours worth of chop. And as you can see by the next screenshot, I entered calls on this, what looked like a pretty good setup, right? You kind of had this flag pattern, right? You had this big move to the upside and then you had, you know, kind of a pullback here with a bottoming tail. I remember I'm like, all right, I'm going to get in on this, right? Now I had a chance to sell up here at the top of this green wick, but I did not because I figured there was so much momentum, right? We did have a little bit of volume building up as well. And I ended up holding the contract started to decay, right? Because with the, the uh, especially when they go sideways like this, the theta on these contracts can really eat your premiums alive. And as you can see by the screenshot, I entered two more times and then I ended up stopping out right over here, right? I ended up stopping out right here on this red candle because I was like, well, I do not want to hold this if it's going to break VWAP and continue to go down. It did not do that, right? I was holding three calls. And if I had just, first of all, this is not part of my strategy holding for this long. This is like, you know, over an hour worth of just holding the bag, hoping that it goes up. I should have cut it over here, right? When I was holding one contract, I should have just gotten rid of it over here, but I didn't. I continued to scale into the position thinking, you know, it had to, had to go higher, right? But we obviously had some resistance here. You can see these top wicks up here. I took a couple more trades, right? Like I enter, entered on puts actually. I, I remember switching positions, which is a big no-no. You should never go from like calls to, to puts or puts to calls, uh, but I did. And I figured, well, hey, I'm going to get on get in on puts. I just sort of lost control, right? And I ended up having to stop out for a $61 loss. So I had made $27. Then I was down uh, $53 on that big chop trade. Then when I switched the puts, I was down $61. By now, I'm like, I really should walk away, right? But I did see one more opportunity, and I'm glad I did take this because even though it was $17, instead of being close to $100 down on the day, I was only down about $75. And I think it was this move right here. We had a, a little pullback, and then boom. Boom, as soon as I was in some profit, you know, I went ahead and took it. All right, so that was my trades from yesterday. I ended the day $72. That was over 6%. And, you know, it's not the biggest loss in the world, right? I didn't take it too bad, but I was more upset that I had, you know, sat around all day trying to fix this mistake, right? This big, long chop. This was a good setup, right? It was a really good setup. You had the pullback, you had the bottoming tail. You know, I thought there was going to be some momentum, but when it didn't work, it didn't work. And I need to just cut my losses a lot sooner, not double down on the position when it's not working. And this really is not my strategy. Like I'll show you today, today's trade, I, I was in and out by like 10, 1030. All right, and I'm going to show that, show you the details on that. This was another trade where I sort of scaled into position. And like I said, yeah, it kind of hurts, right? There were so many entries today and I wanted to re-enter, but I had one good solid trade and I did not want to mess that up. So let, let's go to the one minute and I'll show you what's going on here. So we were in supply, right? We talked about this. We were in daily supply. We had a resistance line as well. And these supply zones, uh, supply zone is basically a period of consolidation followed 
followed by a very strong move to the downside. Like I said, on the daily chart, you know, back in February, it was what, February 18th, February 20th, you know, we had a little bit of consolidation up here and then boom, a huge move to the downside. So I've been waiting a very long time for Square to get to this area. And this is why it pays to be patient in my trading, right? To be patient and really wait for good setups. Granted, my entry was just a little bit early, right? I entered, I think, on this second red candle. Let me look at the, yeah, it was probably that second red candle. And this is why it's good to scale into a position and not, you know, if you're going to buy two or three contracts, don't buy them all at once. Try to scale into it because I actually lost money on this first contract, but I had scaled into position and I had three contracts, which lowered my average cost and I was able to uh, get out with a hundred dollar profit, right? But if I, if I went to my uh, spreadsheet right now, you would see that, you know, I was actually down probably like four or five dollars on this first contract. That was the first entry. Second entry was uh, these candles up here, one of these candles, I saw that we had falling volume. You see how the volume, the green volume is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, and I figured these bottoming tails might be some kind of, you know, bull trap that some whale or hedge fund was trying to pull. And so I entered again, right about there. And then as you can see, we got this huge, you know, not huge, but we got a couple of points uh, to the upside. But as soon as it started consolidating, it, it just broke the resistance level. I knew we had daily supply. What I'm trying to say is, even though now I'm down on this trade, I figured I may as well get one more contract. And if it breaks this high right here, right, if it breaks that, that wick, on that green candle, right? My stop loss would have been right here. Now, granted, I should have um, been a little bit more patient and, and waited a couple of minutes for uh, Square to kind of do its thing. My entry was way too early and I didn't have to lose money on that first contract. Um, you know, I could have gotten a couple of contracts or all three of them up at the top here, but you know, we just can't time these things. You can see the, uh, the candle up here, that wick, that high of 278, that would have been my stop loss, right? I would have had to get gotten out if it had gotten any higher than that. So on this red candle, I got one more contract. So now we have three. I have a three contract position and then square starts do, starts going down. I figured the probability that we were going to get a move to the downside was very high. Number one, you've got eight days in a row of being green. Number two, you're in a very strong supply area where, you know, about a month, two months ago, we got a huge move to the downside. When we hit this area, we're near that kind of all time high area uh, for square and as soon as it broke VWAP I was confident in holding this trade so I have three contracts right I have like almost six hundred dollars or so uh, no I think it was like five hundred dollars uh, on the line and it kind of peaked up over VWAP but my my premiums weren't going against me so that kind of also gave me confidence. Plus we had VWAP kind of just flat during that moment, right? It wasn't starting to curl up. All of these things, you know, there's a confluence, right? The volume, you see the volume starting to pick up and go red. And then we had this move right here, boom. And I, I believe that was where I got out. Yeah, it would have been right about here. I really did not want to take the chance that this was going to turn around. The way the market has been, it would not have surprised me at all if Square had just sliced through this supply zone like butter and made like all-time highs today. That would not have surprised me. And that's where I got out, right? Right on this red candle here. Just sold all three contracts. The probability that it was going to continue to go down like it did was very high, but my strategy is scalping, right? I just want to catch these quick moves, get in and out, log my trades onto my spreadsheet and enjoy the rest of my day. That's my goal. If people want to sit in front of the market all day long and, and day trade, you know, maybe when I have more funds, I'll be able to do that, but I'm just trying to scalp, get in and out. And that was the only trade I took today, right? I feel pretty good about it. My entry was too early, you know, even though we had sort of this falling volume. I, I mean, you could say this was a valid entry because the volume was, you know, getting smaller and smaller. You know, you can see these volume bars, they're getting smaller as we're going up. So it's like price is moving up on small volume. But again, you know, I probably should have waited a couple of minutes just to see if it would try to break this resistance line. And this resistance line is also from 
you know, back in February. But granted, you know, this is why I like to scale into these positions, you know, get a contract, get a second contract. And then, then if the trade is, is starting to work out, get a third contract that gets your average cost down. You don't even necessarily have to break even on the first contract. You could lose on the first contract and the second two is where you make the profit. But this it was all one trade. Boom, boom, boom. And then boom. Boom, that was my exit right about here. Maybe I should have held, you know, in hindsight, I could have held a little bit longer. There wasn't a whole lot telling us that the bulls were going to be in control. You had VWAP definitely trending down. You just never know with these things. And and I do not want to be a part of a pullback. You know, so that's sort of what I'm uh, focusing on. I like to catch that first couple of uh, minutes at the open, right? On the 15-minute chart as well, we had some good uh, confirmation or validation that this trade was going to be a success because of the very tall wick topping wick, red candle, under VWAP, closing under VWAP. Like I said, in hindsight, yeah, it stings a little bit to see how far Square went down, but we just never know uh, where these things are going to go. Uh, and I'll just show you real quick. This is the $100 profit. It was a 9% gain, over a 9% gain in the account. So I I've got to be happy with that. So yeah, just sort of um, accepting my wins, not disrespecting my wins and, and over trading. You know, if there's one thing I've really learned about myself is I, I, I am very impulsive. Like I, I knew that before I started trading. You don't want to be a degenerate gambler about it. There has to be a strategy. My strategy is supply and demand and uh, scalping, just catching those quick moves. But I did not want to disrespect that $100 because out in the real world, there's not too many jobs, you know, that you can just get that will pay you a hundred dollars for a half an hour's worth of work. That was another reason I just had to walk away for the day because now, you know, this account has over $1,200 in it. We've made up about a 20% gain over a 20% gain since I loaded this account last week with a thousand dollars. So don't disrespect the gains, right? If you're trading, if you're scalping, if you're, if you're trying to, uh, you know, build a small amount of capital, don't disrespect that to that $20, right? When, when I see a $20 gain, you know, sometimes even in my mind, I pretend it's $200 because that $20 gain, that's huge in a, a, an account with, you know, um, that's like 2% in an account with thousand dollars. And as the markets are going down right now, my account is growing. So I'm, you know, way outperforming the market today, hopefully with my strategy, um, not over trading, having that control, really documenting and journaling my trades. Hopefully as I live and I learn trade and learn, uh, live to trade another day by not over trading and losing all those profits, you know, hopefully I'll be able to continue to build this account. There's been a couple of accounts where I have, you know, doubled them almost tripled an account one time as well. Uh, so with this particular uh, project, you know, the goal is just to build as much capital as I possibly can in this account. The first goal is to double it. Uh, and then we'll just see, we'll, we'll see where we go from there. So let me know if you guys have any questions, anything that maybe I didn't clear up enough in this video. Also, let me know, what are you trading? What are you investing in? Where are you putting your uh, money. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Instagram. And with that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I'm Charles Marlowe with Millennial Trades. As always, until next time, God bless.